of his life. He must have gone to Florence to draw this because it's not a copy of a cast of the sculpture. It's actually a copy from someone standing there in front of the Michelangelo in, in, in San Lorenzo in Florence and looking up at it. Um, but I mean, I was just very struck by the scale and, and the quality. But you know, he is not a household name at all. There's never been an exhibition or even a, a, an article about his work, although there is, there was an exhibition in the 80s of artists from the north of France of this region, and he was included in that. But, you know, if you look at the- uh, Are there Apple, many of his works in existence? No, no, and, and I mean, I pride myself on doing some, re you know, a lot of research and, and being as thorough as I can, and I've found very little about him, which is telling. Um, you know, we, we know that he lives until the, um, he exhibits until 1956, and he dies the following year. This is dated 1898 when he's still a student. And, uh, you know, obviously he's traveling around and making drawings after sculpture as, as artists did in those days. But what's interesting about it is the scale and the level of finish. And I imagine that it's something that would have been sold as a work of art in its own right because it's signed and, and dated. So. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's something that I saw and just, it struck me. It was a very beautifully drawn work. And in cases like this, the, the name of the artist doesn't really matter so much as the quality of the